is, guys. It's your boy Blastmas HD. Okay, so one of my favorite artists, if not like one of my top three favorite musicians out right now, is Takashi69. I love his stuff. And it's it's extremely unfortunate that we're learning Takashi69 might be going to prison for 32 years, and it sucks. Balls. What I want from making this video is for young people, middle-aged people, anybody to understand you need to get money the right way, you have to pay taxes, you know, like you're gonna have to deal with a whole bunch of crap, or you can get money the wrong way. You could get killed, you'll go to jail if you don't pay attention. I just want people to learn from this situation. Now again, it sucks. I hope he's not convicted. I love his music. So in this video, we're gonna watch In The News TV. Uh, the link to this video will be in the description down below. And uh, the video on DJ Academics channel. They're both hip hop news channels. They're breaking the story and we're about to hear it first with you guys. <sighs> let's, let's, let go. For In The News TV, I'm C. Wright. Thanks for liking this video, making sure you watch the video all the way through. I got some good information about Takashi 69 so let's get into the news. All right, so boom, the official indictment has been released for Takashi 69 He is officially booked for racketeering and firearm charges along with five. Now, me personally, I don't know what racketeering is. A racket is a planned or organized criminal act, usually in which a criminal act is a form of business or a way to earn illegal or extorted money regularly or briefly, but repeatedly. A racket is often a repeated or continuous criminal operation. That sucks, man. That just really, really sucks. People, if convicted, the minimum sentence he faces is up to 32 years. During court today, Takashi was dressed in a yellow outfit, you know, the rainbow hair with the pigtails, both hands and feet in shackles. U.S. Attorney Michael Longyear labeled 69 as quite violent, and he's facing a significant term of incarceration. The feds actually charged five people. They charged 69, Shadi, the security guard who was shot at Philippe's, the shooter during the Barclays incident, including Casanova. And this also surprises me, Mel Murder. If you guys follow Bird Gang back in the day, you remember Mel Murder from BK. During the 17 page indictment, mind you, they've been building this case since 2013. They say this crew will make moves for power, territory, and profits. Look, man. Look. Illegal activity and fame equals jail. Yeah, I mean, if you go, if you gonna be a public figure, yo, you you gotta keep your nose clean, man. To me, peace of mind is way too viable of a commodity to give up. They sold all type of work in Manhattan, the Bronx, and Brooklyn. On April third, Shadi is seen in this picture right here. If you see it, robbing rivals while Takashi Six Nine is recording the whole incident from the SUV outside. A few months later. 6 9 and the whole crew fired up a cookout and hit an innocent bystander in the foot. This person will testify or have some a part of the case, so it's definitely not looking good in the innocent bystander. It's probably a civilian, more than likely a civilian coming to court. In September, the boys raided 6 9 apartment on Kingston Avenue in Brooklyn, and they recovered this AR-15 in the backpack that was found or actually stolen in April. So it looks like they stole a bag back. During this, 6 ix lawyer argues that 6 ix has no relationship with these other guys other than being legal business. Once his rap career took off, he hired these guys for security. As you know, 6 ix fired his whole management team about a week before he was locked up. And according to a wiretap, yes, I said a wiretap, they, was, they wanted these boys bad. Two guys that was arrested were saying they were gonna super violate Takashi 6 9 so this really could have got bad for 6 9 Sunday night, they finally arrested him, and he was about to go to the Foxwoods Casino. He was denied bail because the judge wasn't convinced that 6 9 wouldn't be a flight risk. Listen, man, from what it seems, the feds tied everybody's charges together, and it seems like they're just making each other snitch on each other. That's what it seems like. And if they don't snitch, all of them are going to get the maximum sentence of 32 years. So what do I think about this? I think Takashi was the breadwinner, and I think his homies was just looking out for him, to be real with you. Think about that incident back in April. Why would 6 9 have the same bag that they actually stole from the people in April unless it was his bag in the first place? This is crazy because what it's looking like is they're trying to make 6 9 look like the gang leader. Of course, he's the one with the most influence and the most money. You know what I mean? It does not pay to be the leader all the time, yo. It really don't. Especially when it's crime. 
because someone's always coming for you. It's just too hard. You know what I mean? That's I, I, to keep it real, bro. That's I, that was where I came from with it. It's too hard. You know, like you don't know. You can't really trust your friends because you know they doing the same shit you doing. So there's you know what I mean? Like, and the dog is only as loyal to the last dude that gave him the meal. So the minute you ain't got the cheddar no more, man, there's no telling what they could do. It's too many, it's too many if, ands, or maybe. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with people out there doing what they do, cause, you know what I mean? People are victim of circumstances. I understand that shit, I was, but at the same time, it's just not worth it. It's just crazy because what it looks like is they're trying to make 6 9 look at like the gang leader. They're saying he has 1.3 million in three bank accounts. And from what it looks like, they're trying to say he ordered the moves and all of this violent things. It was all because of Takashi. He's due back in court Tuesday to ask for a bail. He has to reapply because, like they said, they denied it. Let's talk about this in the comments. I'm in the news with it. Make sure you thumbs up this video. I took my time with it. I did my due diligence like I told you guys I was going to do. I just didn't put anything out. So double salute y'all for getting to the end of this video. Let's talk about this in the comments. Them to check it out now and it starts now it's all in the court's hand at this point okay now a lot of people think oh no this is promo for six nine's new album dummy boy comes out on friday he's gonna come out of the courtroom kicking and screaming yelling trey white a lot of people don't realize that this is actually real life okay and a album promo is not a federal indictment and also federal arrest okay however six nine after being taken in on six counts of racketeering his lawyer then immediately made an application for bail to say, hey, 6 9 and by the way, just coming off of the last story, the, the lawyer said, yo, judge, if y'all are telling me based on this indictment that y'all warned 6 9 about other people within his crew or his old crew trying to kill him, y'all warned him the day before, and you offered him protection, and he eventually turned it down and went back home and you locked him up the next day. Well, if we're talking about bail, the only thing that matters when it comes to bail is a flight risk and also a threat to the community. They're basically saying, hey, we'll give up his passport, we'll empty out his bank account. Reportedly, he had between 1.1 and 1.7 million dollars in his bank account. They're saying, we'll give every point in the bank account. We'll give up his passport. I'm surprised that's all he had. Passport. Without all his money and also without his passport, he can't do nothing because the prosecutor of the U.S. attorney was really saying, yo, this guy's really rich. He could move around a lot of money a lot of times and really quickly saying that, yo, 6 9 took out 100000 a couple times out of the bank at once. But 6 9s lawyer is saying, yo, take all the money. Take my passport. Just give him bail. The judge thought about it. And that's when you heard the goddamn prosecutor try to explain, yo, hey, we did offer him protection, but still that doesn't mean he is not a criminal his goddamn self who shouldn't be on the street. Not because we try to protect him in one situation where there could have been people getting killed, and it wasn't more about his safety as opposed to safety of the other people who were going to be at the casino. Because if you don't know, he was supposed to go to some casino in Connecticut, and the feds then locked him up by saying, yo, we're going to lock you up now because you're going in a place where if there is a shootout, other people might get injured. So pretty much with all of his bank account offered to the court, with his passport offered to the court, they turned down bail for 6 9 and everybody else as well. Okay? Now, they've called an emergency hearing for this morning. So in a couple of hours, they'll return back to court where it's just 6 9s lawyers and the judge and of course the US attorney and they're gonna argue again why 6 9 should get bail and I'm pretty sure the prosecutor for the US Attorney's Office is gonna say no this is why he should not again more and more tidbits keep coming out also we get to find out there's a wiretap basically they tap the phones of all these people they're calling the fired employees so everybody who was mad at 6 9 who just got fired, their phones were tapped. So that's how they found out that them niggas didn't like 6 9 and was planning to do something to 6 9 so they locked him up then. If they tapped people's phones like that, you can imagine how much more they got, okay? The FBI was tapping niggas' phones, and if they were reading text messages and 
listening to FaceTime calls, you could imagine what pieces of the puzzle they already put together. Okay, I'll keep you guys updated. He'll be in court in a few hours, and we'll see if the judge changes their mind from yesterday when they said no bail. Okay, get caught, Mark Spencer. As I don't subscribe to Boys Academics. Oh, look, man. With that being said, yo, all I'm gonna say is this: super duper not worth it, yo. Super duper not worth it. The same amount of focus and energy that you put into, you know, I mean, I don't really know the terminology that well, but say, oh, say moving a pack or whatever, you know what I mean? Like doing your thing illegally is the same focus that you could put into getting money legally. Like this with drop shipping, bro. You, this, you, everybody, so many people working from home nowadays. People are streaming, YouTubing, you know what I mean? And you can look up YouTube videos on how to become efficient at any one of those things. A YouTube video teach you how to do any of that, yo. That's real. So, you know what I mean? My advice is, man, just weigh your options, your real options. Don't let whatever current bad circumstance you in and the fact that you need money now or whatever problems you have right now Cloud your judgment and have you do something that'll get you short-term money for long-term sentences. I'm just saying. So, with that being said, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Before I go, always make sure to learn from other people's mistakes. And this is a mistake that everybody should learn from. Watch the company you keep. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. Have a great day. You know what I mean? I go get out there and go eat some ice cream or something. I don't know. I'm about to go take a shit. Ha <laughs> <laughs>